and this budget does. Um, this doesn't matter at all uh, this year, but uh, going forward, no closure. You can't close the, the Stockbridge Catholic Schools or the Rochester Schools without a unified vote of the equally represented board, as well as a, a subsequent town vote of, of, of that particular town. Um, we agree, we, we all kind of agree that the name Rochester Stockbridge Unified District is not the most sexy or compelling name for, for a district. We tossed around, you know, Peavine, the Peavine District. We tossed around uh, uh, something with the rivers I, I, I've forgotten. But basically what we said was that we wanted the, uh, the kids in both schools, the faculty in both schools, the community of both schools to come together and put together a name and, and give us a mascot, a, 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 a identity, and, and, and a better name than the Rock, Rock, Rochester Stockbridge Unified District. Um, and then finally, we have uh, a built-in, uh, baked into the uh, merger articles, we have an evaluation of the, the, the Unified District five years out. Are we doing what we thought we'd be doing? Are we achieving the goals that we set for us? Is this really what we signed up for? We have the, the, the ability to, to uh, reconsider things. As far as Act 46, the uh, financial goals that we had set for ourselves, uh, we achieved in this budget. We have cost control in year one. We have uh, opportunities for additional efficiencies. There's direct financial uh, benefits. We're getting the incentives. We've locked in, uh, despite uh, it's kind of a loophole that we get to take advantage of for once. Montpelier didn't, uh, didn't, didn't, didn't screw up. Uh, didn't get <laughs> Our 
big goals in this budget are to align our educational and operational systems, to try to get things working the same way in both places and figure out how we can be efficient and uh, more coordinated in what we do, to really understand our infrastructure needs, to really, again, understand which, which building costs what to heat in, in, in Rochester, what do we need here in Stockbridge in terms of, uh, of uh, support systems or what are we lacking? I think this campus, for example, is enhanced 911 ready, meaning that if someone calls 911, the classroom, of which there are four, <laughs> all very much next to each other, but still, the, the, that's beside the point, that, that, that classroom information is passed along through this, the, the, the phone system in Stockbridge. The phone system in Rochester doesn't do that. It's just, it just says there's a 911 call from Rochester. Um, so understanding what's going on with our infrastructure, with our internet, with our, our, our building, with our, our lands, um, the plumbing, everything else, really getting a good handle on that so we're having a, a really good and complete picture to make the decisions uh, going forward. Um, specifically, we need to develop the, the Rochester Transition Blueprint. You may recall that at some of our earlier Act 46 meetings, the uh, previous administration was saying, oh, we put them all in the elementary building. Um, the current uh, principal there, uh, Bonnie Warren, is saying, I'm not sure that's the, that's the best interest of those kids. Maybe we should keep some of the building open, and that's what this budget represents. But what that whole conversation brought to the forefront is that we really need to have a, 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 a fairly comprehensive and complete transition budget to move, or transition uh, blueprint to move the Rochester campus from being a, a K-12 campus to a K-6 campus. Maximize the educational opportunities, maximize the value of the building. Um, at the same time, in the reverse, uh, 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 the, the yin to the yang of that, in Stockbridge, we've always had a space need. We've, taught, we've, we've talked about putting a, uh, over the last few years, we've talked about putting a modular building in the parking lot. We've talked about expanding out this way, maybe expanding a little bit in the front um, as we've tried to balance space needs with a limited budget of a, you know, of, of a small school and without trying to, to, to bond out when we're not sure of the future of that small school. That we, we, we really need to understand going forward what the space needs are going to be in this building for the kids that are going to be in this building and how best to expand to, to, to reach that. And finally, and this is the most exciting part, and I'm sure some of the people sitting next to me on the Ed Committee can talk about what we really need to do and what this budget tries to work towards is, is starting us to create an educational strategic plan a way to get to some of the goals that we've talked about, about increased STEM, increased arts, um, using programming, uh, joint opportunities, and things like that. We really need to take this time in this next year to look at what we're good at and figure out where we want to grow. So the first thing this budget reflects is, a, is an administration model uh, that, while similar to what we've had in the past, is, is, is going to be functionally different. Um, in the past, you know, they've been independent schools. There's been a full-time principal at uh, Rochester, there's been a full-time principal in Stockbridge. We still intend to have two full-time administrators. Um, we have the benefit of the current administrator at uh, um, Rochester working within the context, uh, the, the uh, context of the Vermont uh, retire, uh, Retirement Association rules. So she's limited in the amount of time she can work and the amount of money that, 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 that she can earn. So that gives us the ability to, without negatively impacting the budget, we can still bring in another full-time administrator and have a uh, collaborative leadership team. We really think that going forward, we're going to do better um, if we have administrators that are, that are working, uh, working more functionally and more in areas of expertise, rather than duplicating efforts, rather than saying, well, here's what the, the, the curriculum in Stockbridge might want to be, here's what the curriculum in Rochester might want to be, and the two of them go to the steel cage and fight that out and figure out what a collaborative you know, uh, issue might look, uh, look like. Having one administrator that, that maybe has more curricular strengths, taking a look at building out a curriculum with input from the other, while the other one works on teacher evaluation or, or uh, facilities or you know, uh, strategic planning. We think that we can, we can do better and, and better serve our kids if the responsibilities are, are, are delegated more by function and less by, I'm the person that's always in Stockbridge and in charge of Stockbridge, and I'm the person that's always in Rochester and in charge of, 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 of Rochester. Um, we've put together uh, an ad that's been on School Spring for uh, uh, a few weeks. We've 
gotten a, a decent number of response. We formed a, uh, a, a hiring committee that consists of board members, community members, and some staff members from both locations. And that process is going forward. We expect to be interviewing for uh, that next candidate within the next month. Right. Or Friday. the same way that you know, we're doing everything else. 
we're being very prudent and very cautious. And if we had to pee a little more than we possibly could to be safe, you know, uh, that's that's the standard lead. But again, the idea is is that this will be the main part of the high school building that's going to be used educationally next year. And for 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 you know, again, this may all change. We may well turn around as as the the, the, the committee we're putting together develops a more long-term plan. This may become the primary education building, and we do something different with the elementary building. It's all it's all still up in the air. One of the things that we really learned is we don't uh, is we there, there's so much that we don't yet know, and there's so much more information that we need to make good decisions. So with buildings, as I said, there's no elegant or obvious sol uh, solution. So what we've agreed to, what, what we've talked about doing, and, and are trying to put together is we want to create a facilities committee to develop a long-term plan for both campuses. We want to uh, develop an infrastructure inventory and understand the true costs of, of all our buildings. We want to analyze our space needs, figure out what we want for the programming we want, and then how best to make that happen. Um, and then we want to create an accurate maintenance schedule so we can start having an idea of what we need to be putting away to do regular routine maintenance so we're not you know, going through as much, um, oh, <laughs> there's a half dozen urinals that we really, really, really need to replace this year, or these condensers are dead or these circulators you know, are, are really at end of life. Um, as far as curriculum and school programming goes, we, uh, you know, part of the survey uh, told us that really what the communities wanted to see in, in, in this district going forward is a greater focus on STEM, an emphasis on wellness and outdoor learning, exposure to world languages, and an increased exposure to the arts. We're starting with this right away. We have uh, we have a, a lot of really positive art programming that's going on right now on the Rochester campus that we're hoping we can we can draw on and use to support what we're doing, uh, what, what we've been doing here in Stockbridge. Like I said, we'll be sharing the same music teacher, which means increased opportunities for joint band, joint chorus, uh, joint sing-alongs, those sorts of things. Um, world languages, we really, we were really hoping that we could have started that this year. Um, we didn't feel that we had most of the research we were, we were presented with or the discussions we had involved the fact that world languages more than just half an hour of Spanish vocabulary or, or learning French songs, it really needs to be integrated more fully into, in, into the curriculum. So that's something that we're hoping we can put together a, uh, a plan for and start implementing next year. We don't know what that might look like. Would that be a magnet program in Stockbridge? Would that be um, you know, a magnet program in Rochester? Would that, you know, would that be a shared um, immersion curricula, immersive curricula? We don't know. But it's, uh, you know, it's something that we're interested in, in exploring as well as moving forward on STEM education. We'll be starting a Lego League uh, going forward uh, next year. Um, we'll uh, hopefully be uh, increasing some of the, some of the uh, uh, we talked about uh, Science Fridays or uh, different sorts of group programs and, and, and joint activities. Hopefully uh, we'll, we'll be moving forward on that as well. And the thing we do really well and we want to keep doing well at is we, we really do have, at both campuses, there's Forest Fridays in Rochester. We've had wellness and food tastings and uh, garden programs here uh, with our kiddos. The uh, uh, wellness and outdoor learning is a piece that we want to keep running with. We really think that's one of our cornerstone attractors to bring families and uh, other students into the school is the stuff we do, we do outside. So the budget we're presenting, it adds money for special, there's a whole new line item, there's money for special programming opportunities. We've budgeted money to, you know, it's, there's not going to be a regular, all the Stockbridge kids go up on Thursday, all the Rochester kids come down on Tuesday, sort of, you know, busing uh, between campuses. But we've added money to allow for focused, when we're doing team projects or we're doing group, group activities, there's money in the budget to get those kids to, from, from our place to yours or your place to ours. Um, we also we also think this budget creates savings by planning for joint experiences, so we can really double up on buses, double up on admissions, and, and uh, uh, be able to reduce expenses and do more programming because of it. We're also uh, one of the things that our, our uh, business manager had pointed out, and uh, um, actually kind of kicked our butts a little bit to, to put into the budget was, you know, it's 
take, take the idea that, well, the PTO always pays for going to Kiwi, or the PTO usually covers the cost of that, and saying, no, 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 if these are worthwhile programs, they need to be in the budget, the PTO can still fundraise and help and, and, and participate, but it's important to take, you know, to, if, if we value these programs, to take them off the, off, off the backs of the parent volunteers and off the backs of the kids trying to sell wrapping paper and, and Little Caesars meal kits, and, 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 and say, if, if they're worthwhile, we should be paying for it. So we're doing that in this budget. And then finally, we really think that by, by, by doing and focusing on trying to have larger all district events that, that bring the kids from both campuses together to do, to do all sorts of things, that we're really going to be supporting community engagement. Going forward, again, this is the, the opportunities that we see, and this is what I, I, the, the Educational Committee has been talking about already and is, is, is looking towards working, working towards is building a new elementary education model that's both visionary and sustainable, more collaborative learning around STEM and STEAM and MAKER, you know, art cross-campus residency, enhanced farm to school, more big adventures, the things that the kids remember. You know, it's, it's that trip to DC, it's that trip to Boston, it's that raft trip you took, you, you took by Deerfield that, that are the things that, that you remember when you're older. So trying to increase our ability to give those opportunities to the kids. And then leveraging our facilities and our location to, to, to exploit what we've got. We're in the middle of the Green Mountain National Forest. We're in the middle of, we're, we're by the way, we're, we're in the middle of what's a great place to, 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 to learn and explore. And then finally, becoming a school that attracts families, both uh, neighboring and new. Um, as the, the, before I get into the budget numbers, one thing that, that I think it's important that we all remember is that in general, the two towns are, are about a 60-40 split, meaning that Rochester is about twice the, you know, it is half again as big as, as Stockbridge is. Population is 66-44, the grand list is exactly 60-40, um, and student enrollment is 64% uh, of the kids are uh, at, at Rochester, only 36% are here, and then expenditures, uh, Rochester spends 59% of the money and Stockbridge spends 41%. So when we're looking at some of the numbers, there's not going to necessarily be a dollar for dollar equivalence between, between Stockbridge and Rochester because what we're trying to do is make the dollar for dollar for equivalence be for the kids. That a kid in Stockbridge and a kid in Rochester are getting the same amount of investment, the same amount of, of resources, the same amount of time. And so the other piece I wanted to talk about specifically um, besides the general budget numbers, and I put it up here because we understand it's in Stockbridge, but this is this is a new exercise I think for everyone in Rochester, which is that you know it's it's not cheap to send uh, to, to send our kids out for seventh through twelfth grade. Um, of our four point was it four point four million four point seven million total budget. Um, you know, uh, over a million of it is is, is spent educating our, our, our uh, uh, middle school and high school kids. Um, projecting these numbers going forward is always kind of a crapshoot. Um, you'll notice that one of the things um, with Rochester, there's a lot of kids that kind of got split up between Woodstock and, 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 and TSA as kind of the two outlier tuitions, so figuring that they may go somewhere in the middle, but if you kind of put half of the low end and half of the high end, it would give us a good blend because we don't have enough data to really understand um, historically where Rochester kids might choose to go to might, might choose to go to school going forward. And we have some information from some families, but with, with others we don't. So especially on, on uh, uh, the, the seventh and eighth grade, um, that's and, and ninth grade. Those those numbers are, are kind of again just just sort of a best guess by our business manager, but. It's important again to point out that these are not, you know, these, these are not in, uh, insignificant expenses. And one of the things that really makes them matter is that tuition expenses get paid first. The SU gets paid first. The SU gets a lot less money from us than, than our neighboring schools that take our middle school and high school kids. But where it matters is when when we think about what our tax rate might be. If we have to cut costs or save dollars, it's always done in the elementary buildings because we have to pay this. This is the by statute. The parents can send their kids to uh, uh, any public school in Vermont they want, any approved accredited, any approved independent uh, school in Vermont that they want, and they'll get paid the, up to the uh, union school average, which is for next year, fifteen thousand six hundred eighteen dollars. 
dollars. Um, or they can be sent to an, to an approved independent school uh, out of state where the state will pay uh, up to that amount of tuition and uh, educational expenses. Um, the Vermont's Choice does not pay for a room or board or um, activity fees or, 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 or those sorts of things. Um, now I'm going to go through the budget. We had uh, hoped that the business manager was going to make it and he apparently has not. So if you look at the budget, we can start. Um, if you start on page on, on page eight, this is the this is the revenue budget. This shows where all the money that's coming in to pay for the schools comes from. You can start at the top. There's a, there's a 181 uh, 639 uh, fund balance, balance carryover. That's a surplus funds from uh, uh, two years ago. Uh, they're being returned to the voters by, by knocking them off the top. They just count as revenue. They they uh, knock expenses off the top. Um, then the next the, the next lines are important. If you look at the uh, tuition lines, we are bringing in while we may be spending that million uh, 1.2 million spending kids um, uh, to the job. been told that these are, you know, th these are the estimates that the administration and, and, and the business office have provided us. Um, that's the majority of, of uh, local revenue. There's um, some money from E-rate. Uh, there's some money from, from short-term interest. Um, what's important to note is we did not uh, tr attribute any revenue to the trustees of public funds from either town. We're concerned, uh, we're, we're, we're cautious, we're being cautious that we want to make sure that the bequest that, that, that have funded the various the, the, the various uh, uh, funds that we, we draw those money from that were uh, that, that we're spending them properly and we're not jeopardizing the bequest. Um, for example, one of the problem, one of the things that we've actually has the land been released. It's in the process. It's in the process. Yeah. Um, for example, there's there was a land that was donated to the high school students of the town of Rochester. Um, it's a piece of property up on Bingo Road, and uh, it, we're, we're actually the board actually voting to return that to the town of Rochester, Rochester, like like the bequest states, because there are no official high school students of Rochester, and the the cost of trying to take that through probate to get it to, to, to get it adjusted didn't seem did, didn't seem to be you know, worth the effort to. We have so much public lands we can use. You know, to, to, to instead give that land to the town with the, with the town of Rochester deal with it. Um, so again, there's no, it's, it's not that the trustees of public funds cut us off. So we, we uh, until we understand how the various requests uh, uh, legally operate, we, we, we postpone that for a year. Um, if you go down to where it says small schools grant, that $237,000 is, as I said, it is now, a mer it is now officially a merger support grant. Which means that as, if you hear as the legislature is talking about getting rid of small schools grants because there are some towns that were geographically isolated and still are receiving a small schools grant despite not having uh, not having merged and those may, may be going away at least as far as the law currently is, is configured and as far as as, as the Montpelier is letting, letting us know this two hundred thirty seven thousand dollars will be an annual will be an annual year over year uh, a grant that this district will receive. Finally, if you look, there's that 3,193,707 um, uh, number, the general state support. That's actually, that's the money that, that Montpelier is collecting in taxes on our behalf. When you look at what our total costs are supposed to be, and you break that, uh, uh, you break that down through, the, the, the difference between what we get from the tuition we receive, um, the trustees of public funds, um, small schools grants, transportation grants, so on and so forth, um, Title I grants from, from uh, Washington, D.C., that, that dollar difference is how much um, uh, we, need to, we need to take out of, out of your guys' pockets, unfortunately. 
Um, the next page, page nine, is our pre-K program. Um, page 10 and 11 uh, go through and, and talk about our general staffing and expenses. Um, again, as I pointed out earlier, the um, Right, it's 7 o'clock at night. 
Well, maybe um, we should maybe we should modify that so people know they can go and vote during the day because. Well, they can't. It's, it's, it's oh. actually it's a traditional. It's a traditional meeting, and it's a traditional Vermont floor style meeting. So it has to be at one place. You can't have it at two. It has to be in, in just one location because you know you can take motions from the floor. You can amend things from the floor. You can you know you, you have that whole typical town meeting day style conversation. So it has to be at one place, and we've always. You know, had the meetings in the evening for the parents that that you know are, are, are working. Yes, more questions. You certainly can. Why? I, I want to know why there's such a big discrepancy between the two of the largest and the two of the less. Five thousand dollars would not be complete if this school for a year. Where's this? I can't remember. The fuel discrepancy. Why forty-five thousand dollars would not be complete? Five thousand dollars would not be complete. Sensitivity, and that goes 
now almost over, uh, over $125,000. Um, is it 149000 dollars if, if you don't pay by income sensitivity, you've got a lot of money. Your average increase was in, uh, in stock, which is 3.1, now it'll be 2.4. But the average increase under income sensitivity in Stock bridges from less than 1% increase a year. So a 0.8% increase a year. That's a big difference. Um, and it's very, very important for those people that don't have a lot of money. And um, so that number is very important, I think, for your meeting on the 22nd to be able to speak to that because the vast majority of the people in the room, and certainly the vast majority is going to be funding these wonderful schools, will be paying through income sensitivity. And um, so I urge him, Sandy, you can help us get that number. Because uh, I don't know how um, school directors can speak to the public and not tell what the impact is going to be. Um, Two thirds of the population, if the state doesn't come up with that number. Um, the number we're talking about is that tax cap, income tax cap, uh, that's provided by the Secretary of Education. So, so I don't have the number in front of me. We did pass a bill. That would set that, but we understand that the governor may oh, not accept it. Okay. So yeah. um, I would say that at best, we would have a guest. So I think you brought up a good point. It's, it's important to remind people about the income sensitivity. Yes. Uh, it's not when you're looking at these numbers. Yeah, and that's historically, it's been considerably less. Right. Um, and that's very, very important. Bill, will you be at the meeting on the 22nd? Yes. Good. And, I, I, and Bill, I apologize, because normally that's going to be a slide, and I usually just drag that out of the numbers I've got from the business manager. And as soon as you said it, I was like, oh, I did not. Well, David, I'm not giving this out. I did not ask for it. Well, because the state hasn't got a close to the budget. Well, right. There should be like a rough recommendation. That, 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 I mean, it's as close as you get. Well, I'd love to know if this is like the one on our 10 year spreadsheet for Stockbridge. Because I think people feel, gee, we're paying so much, it just goes up, 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 up. And when we run the numbers, um, the increase has been very, very reasonable. It's not that it wouldn't be nice if it took a, <laughs> a, it took a, a nose dive, but we want the quality to be there, and we're paying a very reasonable increase per year, thanks to state support and everything else. And certainly income sensitivity has been part of it. If you've got that, want to share that with us. Uh, I'd love to run those numbers. Absolutely. Thank you. So when the town clerk gets the tax money and um, we have this unified district, do they just send our portion, our town clerk sends our portion, and Rochester town clerk sends their portion to the supervisor union? Or how is that going to work? Um, actually, the way it used to work was, I believe the Rochester town clerk was the Rochester school district treasurer, and Kathy Brown was the Stockbridge school district treasurer. And now there's a, there, a person who's the unified school district person, that, and all that money will come from the state, and she'll get the, the checks to authorize to turn over to the business office to pay the bills with. And what was her name? Uh, Desiree. Desiree. Desiree Portman. 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 Portman is the so she she she'll be the treasurer that handles the, the school financing. So Kathy Brown just do the tax collection like she does, and then the state, and then she sends that money to Montpelier for stock. And Joanne sends that money to, to what's Joanne's last name? McDonald. Joanne McDonald will send that money from Rochester up to Montpelier. No. And then eventually someone in Montpelier will get around to sending us some of it back. Eventually? <laughs> okay. Kathy? Thirty-six percent of it uh, is in stock. What are the numbers? Um, I believe Stockbridge is fifty-seven. I don't know what Rochester is. Ninety-four. 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 So that, that sounds that that sounds about that. That's, that's about right. right. That's just elementary school. Correct. Right. Just right. elementary. Mm -hmm. Well, no, it's pre-K. No, it's not just elementary because the pre-K is a fraction of those kids. We're going to roll them all pre-K. If you if you want to know that October one number, I could I could pull that. But if you want exact. 
It's, it's, I believe it's, it's, it's bodies in the school, and I believe it includes pre-K through Yeah, I believe it was actual bodies in the school. I think it's just 80 of them.